Hello, welcome to Lazada Insider, featuring knowledge that makes a difference. We share trusted insights, forward-looking perspectives, and exclusive expert interviews to keep you ahead of the curve. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Lazada Insider Consumer Insights Series. And I'm your host, Katrina, Senior Manager from Lazada Group Strategy. In the past two years, the digital and the physical worlds are becoming increasingly entwined and consumers are more open to new and meaningful experiences regardless of the channels. This certainly represents endless opportunities for business to create superior experience across different touch points. So if your business wants to combine the best of the both online and offline worlds, today's interview is for you. I have two expert guests joining me today from Asia Insight. If you watched the Stay at Home Trend episode before on Lazada Insider, you're probably familiar with Chong Hin already, co-founder and CEO of Asia Insight, coming with over 25 years of experience in market research and insights. Good to see you again, Chong Hin. And we have a new guest today, Adrian, uh, Managing Director from Asia Insight, also a very seasoned market researcher with over 21 years of experience in the industry. Welcome, Adrian. So, Chong Hin and Adrian, could you quickly share a bit more about what Asia Insight does and also a bit more about yourself? Sure. As you have uh, introduced, uh, thank you again for your introduction. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Asia Insight. We are a market research consultancy and we serve large multinationals across uh, the Asia Pacific region over the last 25 years. And our client uh, spans from like uh, technology, automotive, uh, finance, luxury brands, consumer products, and also from the government sector. How about you, Adrian? Um, yes, I lead the team at Asia Insight to, to deliver our insights to clients across the Asia Pacific region. So it's a rather hands-on role that includes uh, consulting engagements, developing, developing a business and developing our talents. Thank you. Thank you for the intro. Very exciting. Different categories of clients, a lot of insights uh, from your day-to-day -day job, I guess. So let's dive into today's topic, shopping in the digital world. So what exactly is digital to start with? Maybe Chong Hee, you can help us understand better. Sure. So digital is quite a new buzzword in the marketing space. It is kind of a word play between uh, physical and digital, you know, that's why when we combine the two words to become digital, you know. So the hybrid word is kind of up and coming trend whereby physical uh, traditional channels are merged together with the online channel. And now it spans across all areas of our lives. You know, you can imagine from uh, our work, <laughs> when we start working from home, home-based study. And of course, in terms of consumer shopping behavior, yeah, now consumers don't just shop at one channel, but they go to the, say, brick and mortar retail store, and then they visit the e-commerce site. And, you know, they kind of switch in between the two from the process of uh, information search to uh, product consideration to even buying of products. And these two um, channels, you know, like switching between the two channels is like blurring. Yeah, very blur now for most of the consumers, yeah. Hmm. Maybe you can tell us a little bit more. What are some of the key observations you had on this shift towards digital shopping behavior? Yes, uh, based on a uh, lot of uh, market research that we have done during this pandemic period, this uh, digital shift has been largely driven by consumers, of course, you know, and uh, like what I've mentioned, they switch between online and offline channels. So, for example, in a past, say, a couple who wanted to shop for an electric uh Oven, you know, just uh, to state a case example from one of our focus groups uh, discussion, um, most of the time they will go to say an online internet site to search for product information. Then they will go straight to an electronic uh, retailer, you know, to shop, you know, get a touch and feel of the product. And then they quickly just buy it off the retail store, right? But today the consumer shopping journey has become much more complex. Yeah, they might walk past a physical store and they saw a product of interest. It triggered their interest and then they go online, maybe right even at the shopping mall you know, or the retail mall, and they do online search on their mobile phone. And then they get a touch and feel of the product. 
But after that, they go home and patiently wait for the next sale, you know, <laughs> online, and then they buy it from an e-commerce uh, marketplace. So this is how uh, complex it can get. It can get even more complex, you know, and it's not only applying to home electronics or um, uh, home appliances, but across various categories, including cosmetics, uh, fashion, and even food and groceries. Yeah. So although it's not like new, new, but the stay home economy during this uh, pandemic has greatly propelled this kind of what we call omni-channel behavior, you know, like the consumer switching between fiscal and uh, online channels very, very um, frequently and constantly. So to them, there's no, not so much difference, you know, to them between online and offline channel. So this is what we call digital and also we call it uh, om omni-channel for, for most of the time, yeah? Mm, thanks for sharing the observation. Maybe I'll pose the next question to Adrian. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I think Chong Hee mentioned a little bit that this trend has been accelerated uh, in the recent couple of years. Would you agree that COVID-19 has really put a brighter spotlight on this shift? Um, yeah, definitely COVID has uh, changed a lot of things. As Chong Hee mentioned, we have been doing quite a number of studies. And um, in fact, a recent survey on omni-channel uh, shopping behavior uh, we did one study like that and compared that to a similar study three years ago. And we found that across eight major categories, um, over half of the recent purchases involved both an online as well as an offline touch point at some point of the journey. So, and, and when you compare this with three years ago, this proportion has increased along with uh, the expected reduction of pure offline only journey. That means people are, um, there are fewer people who are shopping only offline. Um, in particular, when you deep dive into it, we see the categories of household appliances, uh, home and living, and electronic gadgets having the largest incidence of omni-channel journeys. Um, these are, of course, categories where shoppers tend to take a longer time to research and learn about the products before buying. So across categories, uh, we think it's vital for brands to really rethink their retail and e-commerce strategy and adapt to this behavior. Mm, what I'm hearing is that actually the pandemic is acting like a catalyst per se, la, especially for certain categories um, towards this omni-channel uh, shift. Um, given that, right, how do you foresee then if let's say COVID-19 subsides uh, in the future, how much of these behaviors you describe, would you foresee go back to the pre-pandemic time or you know, the omni-channel will become more of a commonplace even in the future? Mm. I, I think... Um, like in most things, there would be certain human behaviors that would revert to normal. But at the same time, uh, COVID has kind of brought about an acceleration in the way that we use technology. Uh, many people who are now working from home, you know, will not want to go back. But it does not mean that we will totally not go back to the office, but there will be some uh, ways that we can adapt. So I think in that same way, uh, you know, brands should also adapt when it comes to, uh, um, you know, to the to providing seamless experiences as their own customers shift between online and offline shopping channels. Um, mm. You know, what I mean is that a brand should uh, empower a customer who wishes to go online. Um, let's say they're standing inside the retail store and then create a journey. If this is missing, a customer that goes online and, um, you know, when you're in a retail store and you want to check out something online and there's no curated experience, they may well end up with a, you know, a competitor web store, for instance, and then you lose that business. So, um, and, and I think today um, in our studies and client interactions, we observe that this integration of e-commerce with brick and mortar retail strategy is still a big challenge. Um, and the reason is because a lot of traditional retail brands, they focus on the physical experiences. So I, I recall, um, you know, we, we were talking to someone in a recent study about buying an air fryer and uh, on the spot, what happened was in store, she used a phone to mm -hmm. Um, go online to learn more about the products and then to compare prices. And it was quite unfortunate that that particular store, you know, did not provide a way for her to check out on price and promotions so that she could make a better decision there and then. So she bought something and later kind of regretted it. Um, so therefore, what would have been ideal, and, and we see some stores already doing this, is to provide um, easier access, let's say via QR codes or uh, maybe an on-site tablet where they can find information to allow the customer to explore. Because like it or not, this is what they're going to do. Um, they will not just take at face value what they see at the, the store display. So, and, and the best part is that you can use these platforms to incorporate a, a call to action 
such as on the spot discounts to encourage a purchase uh, to complete the journey. And it's not just about offline to online experiences that we are talking about. I think for some products, customers are starting to shop from home first. So this online forward to offline experience can also even be optimized. So when we study this, we, we really challenge ourselves and our clients to um, you know, have this paradigm shift in our thinking. How do we use online and offline spaces and how to blend both together to create an integrated and holistic shopping experience? And I couldn't agree with you more on the challenge you shared, right? In a sense, this shift towards omni-channel is happening so fast. In a sense, mastering omni-channel strategy might not be in the DNA of many businesses. <laughs> so um, shall we bring this concept of uh, integrated shopping experience uh, that you mentioned more to life? Uh, maybe Chong Hen, you can share with us some examples. Sure, yeah, I think this is a very good observation because the speed of changes is so fast and brands have not uh, reacted so quickly, you know. Maybe many are still very busy with uh, the up and uh, uh, increasing e-commerce sale, you know, so they have not thought about this integration. But definitely dealing with many brands, we have seen very uh, good uh, practices, which I can share a few. So let's start with an example of uh, change of retail space usage, yeah? retail strategy, in terms of a brand, how they, they, they change uh, fiscal retail strategy. So like a major brand, they used to have large flagship store in the city. Yeah, we are uh, familiar with flagship store. Um, but now they kind of relocate to smaller uh, decentralized uh, experience centers closer to customers' uh, residential areas. Yeah. So this actually would help because uh, the, 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 this store serves as dual role, firstly as a delivery hub, as well as collection center. So this increased the uh, convenience you know, for customers if they want to visit the store, but it also reduced the delivery time yeah, for consumers. So that's one uh, kind of shift uh, between uh, 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 the moving, you know, the, the shift to, to make the online and offline experience closer to consumer. Yeah. So another example which I can highlight is uh, how consumer, uh, how our uh, retailer brands bridge online and offline experiences yeah, by employing technologies such as virtual reality, you know, to enhance customer shopping experience. For instance, a, a, a cosmetic brand, they allow, you know, you like say, Katrina, you want to buy lipsticks <laughs> to post your photo onto the uh, e-commerce site. And then you can visualize how the different colors of lipstick look on your face or on your lips, you know. Then this tool also not only allow you to experience, but it allows uh, the brand to cross sell recommend other related products. So hence, uh, increasing the shopping basket value, you know. So this is very important, I believe, for many e-commerce uh, retailers out here, right? And, you know, there's also many different usage of uh, technology. Like, for example, in China, one very popular uh, approach uh, now is using human touch to sell online. So we call it live streaming selling, yeah? So a real life person showcasing your product and creating like an interactive and engaging atmosphere. And it has been proven that such increase in uh, emotional connection will better close deals yeah, for our clients. So um, in China, you can also see many celebrities uh, engaged yeah, by brands to do this live stream selling and they can sell millions of products. So this is also another idea that our brands mm. uh, can use. Yeah, finally, one more example is on uh, in terms of the product delivery experience because many brands use a third-party agent to fulfill the delivery yeah, of the products. So it can become very impersonal. So one example is an electronic brand. They provide kind of a wow, welcome experience when you receive the product at your doorsteps, you know. So the whole entire um, unboxing experience, we call it, uh, or out-of-box experience, is very well designed. There are many uh, happy congratulations messages to the customer oh you know welcome to our family you know and it's a great product that you have uh, chosen then there are also fun content to help customer to make best use of the product then there's also QR code for customers to scan and then join a royalty uh, uh, sorry a loyalty club yeah so in doing so there's building of strong customer connection and loyalty 
I think these are some good examples when how brands, uh, you know, try to merge the online and offline experience because, you know, to consumer these days is quite seamless. Yeah, whether it's online or offline, ultimately is the brand experience that they will receive. I I really love those examples you shared. Very exciting. So for businesses who want to eventually achieve there, who want to embark on this journey and jump on this omni-channel bandwagon, how should they get started? Well, I think the first step uh, would be to first study and understand your customers' um, common digital shopping journeys. Um, so through understanding how they actually go from the point of uh, awareness and to the purchase, um, you can uncover how, when, and especially why customers actually switch between touch points. Okay. So the journeys actually begin from awareness and consideration followed by exploration, which includes things like information search, uh, comparison, and short listing of products. And finally, the purchase itself. Um, I made it very simple, but usually it's quite a meandering journey. So people go from online to offline, offline to online, and, and so on. And um, we then uh, you know, work with our clients, for instance, to bring in the e-commerce and in-store retail teams, uh, who sometimes may be working separately, right, to then develop cross-channel strategy. So some examples would be, um, let's, let's take the electronic products as, uh, again as an example. Um, someone who wants to buy, let's say, a laptop may start with online information search. So they may go and look at search engines um, and user form reviews. And then the next stage can be where the shopper itself goes to the retail store to touch and feel the products. So we, we advise clients at this point to create strong retail presences online. And, and what do we mean by this? You know, brands should create positive imageries of their physical retail stores when the customers shop online. So for instance, um, you can showcase your flagship retail stores via virtual reality for online shoppers to experience the so-called the virtual showrooming effect. So even if they can't go into the store, they can actually see uh, what it's like. Um, and of course, with the metaverse coming about, um, there are a lot of opportunities for this. Just watch this space in the next three to five years, right, or to 10 years. Um, and this is especially accelerated during the pandemic because some customers may not be able to, or they may not want to actually visit the physical retail stores. So they will instead use e-commerce sites to compare um, shortlist products. Um, therefore, other than virtual showrooming, um, some uh, brands can also tap on uh, today's technologies, you know, augmented reality product visualization um, to actually help customers to experience the products virtually. And, and lastly, something very simple, you know, brands can also help consumers to find the nearest retail store online while browsing in search engines and user forum so that as they are online, you can tell them, okay, we know that we, we predict that your next step is going to go to the store. This is where we are, just a five minutes walk from your place. And that will then smoothen the journey. So you kind of control, or I would say, curate the journey um, so that you lose less of your customers and you keep them on that journey to the point where they actually make the purchase. So if you think about it, if you go to that step one of understanding consumer journey, right, it, it, it is becoming more complex now. And probably different consumers, they will go through different journeys nowadays. So how can business find out what is this consu hmm. consumer journey look like? Is it through talking to your consumers, observations? How, how can they find out to start with? Hmm. Uh, well, uh, I think in the first place, there is no one common uh, customer journey, very often for most products. Uh, but we find like a Pareto principle, 80-20 rule, that many of the journeys can um, kind of co coalesce into three or four common routes to a purchase. So once we, we look, and how do we understand this? Um, essentially, we put ourselves in the shoes of the customers. Uh, we speak to them and we... Um, we, we also uh, you know, do focus groups and observation. We go on shopping, uh, shopping trips together with them. But then how do we then capture the online portion? Um, so what we have done is to actually um, uh, you know, recruit some of these shoppers and uh, use app experiences. They will download an app that will allow us to understand what is their online journey. So do they start with a search engine first and then go to the website? or do they go to a user forum and so on and so forth. So I think measuring both the online journey and the offline journey and combining that together um, will then help us to piece this puzzle together. 
Excellent. Thank you for sharing the tips and techniques here. I mean, there are a lot we can discuss about this topic, but probably we sure. have time for one last closing comment. Maybe I'll pose it to uh, Chong Hin. Sure. Yeah, so maybe to wrap up what Adrian said, what we are doing is to follow a customer through their entire shopping journey. You know, so we recruit the person, we almost do what we call ethnography, you know, like you live with the customer, sometimes virtually, and see how they shop between offline and offline and how to converge. And then we identify, you know, like trigger points where brand can enter to sell or, you know, promote their brands. Yeah. So finally, I think uh, this is a very important session, I feel, for many brands because as we are talking to many brands uh, and helping them to build their strategy, we have found that, you know, because many brands are now quite busy growing the e-commerce yeah, and meeting the e-commerce demand. And so by mapping out consumer journey, we are trying to um, share with our clients that they should not neglect the offline experience as well because both come together as a whole brand experience right because ultimately when after the covid while well, the online part um, will still go on but customers still want to have like touch and feel of uh, and personal service right at the retail store right so then brands should work together the whole augmentation of online offline so that a customer will experience a seamless omni channel a uh, shopping journey, you know, when they switch between online and offline, they don't feel the differences. So this kind of kind of holistic, we call uh, holistic digital omni-channel shopping experience, will greatly enhance your brand, uh, 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 br uh, your your brand awareness and your brand preference. Yeah. So and it definitely will help you win your customers over. <laughs> so that's probably my uh, final conclusion for brands out there. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chung Hain. And I, I completely agree with you. I think eventually when, you know, COVID subsides and then, you know, we are free to go out and experience, I'm pretty sure that a lot of the consumers will probably go to the, you know, physical stores again. But, you know, I think what the brands and the retailers, the offline retailers um, also need to be noting is that these consumers will not be the same consumer you serve two years ago, right? They will demand something different. They are looking for experience. They experience mm -hmm. the convenience and, you know, the um, the experience online already. So um, they will demand something different probably. And, exactly. you know, for brands and retailers, they really need to start right now um, to get prepared, to be well positioned, to deliver such experience uh, in the future. Um, it was very great sharing from both of you. I, I thoroughly enjoyed our conversation. Thank you so much again, Chung Hin and Adrian for joining Lazada Insider. Thanks, Katrina. Thank you, Katrina. This is Lazada Insider. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Make sure you click follow and subscribe so you don't miss our latest insights and expert interviews. Thanks again for joining us. Until next time, take care. La,